you were the receiver I grew up with. You were the star receiver. Pittsburgh Steelers, Terry Bradshaw, all. You know, it's funny. Free agency. I was a part of your youth. You were a part so of I'm my I'm much youth. older than but you. But you look fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. But when you look at the NFL today and you think about your playing days, are there similarities? Do you see dissimilarities or similarities? Well, I, I see change, which I think is good. Um, I try not to compare the times when I played professional football to what they're doing today because the game is so very different. I mean, we never had four wide receivers lining up. You and Stallworth <laughs> each take a sign. Yeah, we go split ourselves in half and, you know, split up the number of passes. I mean, if we threw 15 or 20 passes in the game, that was a lot for us in those days. So I don't really try and compare. I mean, you know, I, I looked at guys like Paul Warfield when I was growing up, or Otis Taylor at Kansas City, and I watched these guys and Fred Bolitnikoff and so forth. And, you know, the teams were different then. We ran routes. You know, we ran patterns across the field. Today's game is a little faster, more physical. Guys are running more angles. You know, they're the rub routes, the quick passes, the quick screens. Bubble screens taking over the league. Yeah, and it's, and it's an aggressive form of football, and you have to have it because in most cases you have a defense trying to respond to offensive change. Fans love offense. They like to see guys making plays, faking guys out, making the big plays down the field. The speed increases. So what happens every time when something comes along like a West Coast offense, you have to have a Lawrence Taylor who blows up the left side of your offensive line. Now you got to have a left tackle. Now you got to change your rules so you don't block like this, you block like that. you got to change your rules in terms of safety and other issues. The game becomes faster. Makes those bubble screens a little more available to people. No bumping down the field. So all these things change. And so I like the game. It stays relevant as it moves forward. If we played the game the same way we did when I was a player, people would be bored. Move that mic just about three or four inches closer. Lynn Swan's a Hall of Famer. If you've never seen Lynn Swan highlights, you can YouTube them. Um, the catch over Mark Washington is largely regarded as the greatest catch in NFL history. I remember the game. I remember the teams. Um, it, it, it's interesting, though. You were, uh, and I wouldn't, I, you were a, a disciplined player. I would say flamboyant because your catches were flamboyant. You were artistic in the way. You had a little Kobe Bryant. Your shot was beautiful. Your receptions were beautiful. But stars were different. Cam now is all over TV. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't turn the television on. Blake Griffin's all over TV. Did you do commercials? No. Not one? I, I, I did one commercial for well, High C. The drink? Yeah, the drink. So take me back to stardom. When you played in the NFL, what was well, a star it, like? It, 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 it really wasn't wide receivers. If you're a receiver, you weren't going to be a star when I was playing in the National Football League, especially for a team like Pittsburgh. We very seldom, again, threw the ball that right. much. But you, you might remember Super Bowl X, I was the MVP. Yes. Okay, and there was the, the whole Disney thing about, you know, hey, Super Bowl MVP, uh, you just won the Super Bowl. Where are you going? I'm going off to Disney World. Not, not me. I think it was Bradshaw. <laughs> I didn't even know I was the MVP of the game until the game was over. And that was only on catching four passes. Name me a wide receiver who's going to be MVP with four catches in the Super Bowl. Here's what's funny. I, and I told you this at practice recently for USC. You're their athletic director. I said, I remember details about your NFL career. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can name the entire Steelers offense uh, defense, I can go linebackers, safe, everything. Offensive line, I'm, I forget after Webster, some of the guys. But I don't remember your college career. Mm -hmm. The world's different now. USC, Texas, Alabama football players, they're stars. Oh, yeah. There, there are people out there willing to give them $100 handshakes. As an athletic not director. In I'm, the old days, maybe. Not well, anymore. Well, here, here's <laughs> but my, they're willing, maybe. Here, but here's my issue. W with being an athletic director today, what keeps you awake at night? Because... Now, you were an unbelievable college player. I don't even remember your career. These college guys, the Johnny Manziel types, they are, I mean, uh, they're the center of our universe. Do you worry that the college game is getting too professional? I don't worry that the game is getting too professional. Uh, what keeps me up at night would be the things that you can't predict. You know, if, if the phone rings and it's my USC phone, uh, I'm wondering, okay, what is it? You know, is you know someone in trouble? Does someone need help? Uh, you know, what's gone wrong? That kind of thing. 
Uh, the day-to-day -day things, we have a great staff of people. We have a great organization with a great guy in terms of compliance now, uh, Dave Roberts. Keeps everything moving on track. But, uh, but they are kids. But they're kids. They're going to make mistakes. When they make mistakes, we want them to do two things. At least I want them to do two things. Number one, not make a mistake that's so big they can't recover from. Okay, none of us is perfect. Yeah. So we want them to recover from whatever it is they do and understand it's a mistake so you can get back on the right side of the line. And the second, maybe the most important thing is we look at the aftermath of a couple of things that happened at the Olympics. Tell the truth. Be honest. So you can help them. When you make a mistake, don't compound it by not telling the truth. Don't compound it by exaggerating, if you will. Just tell the truth. You made a mistake. You know, you ripped a poster down. You kicked a door in. And it was a bad night. You know, but don't complicate it. It's, it's harder when you complicate things along those lines. And then it sometimes comes off that you're maybe a little bit disingenuous. You're trying to get away with something. You feel more entitled. Then we start to lay all these other labels and assumptions onto that incident and onto that person. Be honest. You made a mistake. Tell the truth. Let us help you. Lynn Swan, USC Athletic Director, Hall of Famer, one of the great wide receivers in league history, a Super Bowl MVP, a four-time Super Bowl champ, and a three-time Pro Bowler. Uh, USC schedule is the hardest I've ever seen. The first month is ridiculous. At Stanford, at Utah, essentially Alabama will have a, some home field advantage in Dallas. I think it's too hard. I'm not blaming anybody, but it's too hard for a, for a, for a Clay Hilton. How patient can you be? You're going to get phone calls. If they well, lose I think Dallas, you have to be patient. You have to be patient. What if, look, what if Clay look, goes 6-6? Six look, six? look at the circumstances surrounding the arrival of a Clay Helton as a head coach. Things you can't predict, and you're putting together a schedule. You're playing in the Pac-12 that's getting more difficult. You've expanded from the 10 to the 12. You're making the adjustments. You have a playoff game. Now he's a head coach. And I think Clay's a good guy, okay? He's got a great opportunity in front of him. In front of him. Comes from a great football family. He's been around the game a long time. I've watched him on the practice field. I've watched him in meeting rooms. I've watched him with the alumni. He is the same guy in all three yes. settings. Yeah, yep, I've heard the same thing. Very consistent. But you're going to get a call. If they, oh, if they, I'll, I'll get lots of calls. Lynn, this is Bob, uh, Mercedes dealer. I don't like that game plan. What are you going to do about it, Lynn Swan? Well, I'm going to put the top down on my convertible and come down and talk to you a little bit. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're going to get and that take, call. And take the phone call. USC boosters are ridiculous. <laughs> well, you know, look, that's okay. You know, as, as a professional football player and certainly as a gubernatorial candidate in Pittsburgh and in Pennsylvania in 2006, I know I can't get everybody on my side. Okay? And you know you're going to have people who are rooting against you or the naysayers, that kind of thing. Um, wouldn't you say that the Rooney family and the organization has been one of the more consistent and oh, yes. successful? Blue Bloods. Before I took this job at USC, I had a meeting with Art Rooney Jr., Dan Rooney's son, and Dan Rooney. And I sat down with them, not telling them exactly why. I kind of hedged it. I didn't want to let anything out. And sat down and talked with them for about 45 minutes to an hour on their philosophy, building a team, selecting a coach, They've only had a handful, Chuck Noll, Bill Cower, you know, Mike Tomlin. What'd they say? And they said, every time you select a head coach, you become a new franchise. You're starting over. He says, what we've tried to do is be consistent. Age is not an issue for them. Mike Tomlin was one of the youngest head coaches in the NFL when they hired sure. him. Bill Cower was young. Chuck Noll was an unknown kind of commodity when they hired him. But they hired people who believed every day and what they wanted to do and accomplish because the players college and pro can tell right away when a coach is just kind of doing it and doesn't believe it. And so you've got to hire someone who truly believes in what it is they're trying to accomplish. What kind of offense do you want to run? What kind of defense would you like to you know, implement? How do you want to handle players What's your attitude towards the players and how do you motivate them and how do you lead them? How do you teach them? And that kind of consistency. And I took away from that this one thing. We've got a coach at USC who's got the ability and he's got an opportunity in front of him. 
I'm going to give him everything I can to support him and give him an opportunity to grow that team. You just finished saying, talking about Michigan, most guys become a head coach. You need three years to compete with the Alabamas or Ohio State. Yeah, to what build Harbaugh's the team done is and the best case scenario. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, you, and you look at what people sometimes get fortunate with. You look at what happened in Tampa when Tony Dungy left a really good team, and the next guy comes in, they go to a Super Bowl and they win. Barry Switzer in oh, Dallas. Okay, Barry Switzer in Dallas. All of these things. That's not going to happen for Clay. He didn't inherit a team that was mature. A lot of senior experience, all the talent and all the depth. He inherited a team that's coming back from sanctions, that's on the way up, that's going to be better. It's and super he's young. got a chance to improve and teach them. And I think, based on what I've seen, he's going to do a very good job. Now you put that product on the field. You put those young men on the field, and we'll see how they play. One more question, a minute left. Lynn Swan, Hall of Famer. Go back to the Pittsburgh days. I saw a picture they put up with Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> I read all these stories years later. Oh, Chuck Knoll didn't like Bradshaw. Bradshaw didn't like Chuck Knoll. Terry wanted to throw it. Chuck wanted to run it. Was it kind of combative there? Because no. from the outside, you always heard it was. Yeah, you know, look, it, 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 it wasn't combative for us. Uh, you know, if they were in meeting rooms and they went back and forth because Chuck was the quarterback coach, offensive coordinator. And so they were always in meetings together. We weren't in those meetings. We don't know what's going on. You know, Terry comes out for practice. He plays. He gets in games. He plays. And – you know, it was all good. You know, I think Chuck gave Terry what he needed to be the best player. I think he understood Terry. Uh, he gave Terry the latitude to do certain things, yet other things maybe he controlled them a little bit more. And Terry developed and flourished. You know, we, we won two Super Bowls, and Bradshaw was not MVP of either one. Franco Harris was the MVP of the first one. I was MVP of the second one. Was Bradshaw crazy, though? Because he's nuts here. Well, I mean, th I, I think that was always in him. But I think it's come out more because now you're in the entertainment and sports world. Yeah, he's world. crazy. <laughs> he's going a million miles an hour. Well, he's not all that crazy. You know, so he's he wasn't crazy. crazy as a player. He was, he, was, he was crazy like a fox. I'll give you one example. I'll tell it really quick. I put in a play against the Dallas Cowboys in Super Bowl thirteen. It's a slant takeoff because every time the quarterback took a four-step drop, the Cowboys' safeties would read the drop, come charging up looking for the short pass, right? Okay? They're reading the quarterback. Sure. So I said, well, I told, you know, Tom Moore, who was our receiver coach, what happens if I go on a slant and we get Terry to take a three-step drop like he's going to throw the quick slant because he was terrible at play action. Okay, he's trying to fake a handoff five yards away from the running back. So he's got to fake it, and that's our signal to turn it upfield and take the skinny post. If the safeties read it, they come charging up, we go right by them. So I put in the play, 42 I take off, a lot shorter than the Kansas City sure. version, right? Yeah. So we get, I'm the right side receiver, even numbers. We get in the hollow and, and gives you an idea. You talk about the quarterback's maturity, game experience, getting more comfortable. First two games, first two Super Bowls, Terry Bradshaw, not that many passes, really easy, no MVPs. He gets in the perfect situation for this play. He looks at me. He smiles and calls the play I created and put into John Stallworth, who goes like 60 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm going like, I'm running down the field going, yay. <laughs> yay. You did all that work. Well, yeah, but later on I caught it. We called it again. I had to make an adjustment. Okay. We win the game by four points. But, yeah, just that was Terry's kind of growing, becoming more comfortable, easier in the hollow, you know, a little mischievous, mischievous at times, but much more serious when he played at quarterback, kind of, you know, sticking to his, you know, sticking to the book, you know, no stories about him looking up in the stands in the Super Bowl and saying, isn't that somebody up there and yeah. relaxing the team? We played hard. We played well as a team. Good seeing you, Lynn. Lynn Good Swan. to be here. I can a second in Los Angeles, the Herd.